All right. Since these were released, I've been wanting to talk about them, but uh, I was not able to get my hands on any until Ryan from Silver Fox uh, picks them up and I was able to pay him for these. And I'm just like way late finally getting my hands on them. And wasn't sure if I really wanted to do a video on them at this point because everybody's already talked about them and the point that they're awesome and this is super cool. Um, well, that's been said a million times, but so having a conversation with another friend about how X-Shot had responded to a message saying that they were looking into half-length darts or something along those lines and the potential excitement that could lead to. Now, whether or not that was a genuine kind of uh, response that yes, they're actually looking into it or if it was just kind of a, a general, like we look into a lot of things and probably nothing will come of it is something we don't know and we have to consider for these types of things. but it got me thinking about something that's somewhat related to these being released. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these and then a little bit more about something related to them. First things first is price. These are not the cheapest option you will find, but they are a respectable price. They are relatively affordable and paying a little bit more for convenience of just being able to go to a store and pick up competitive half-length darts that you can use and know they will be of a good quality, that's that's worth a good amount of money. And uh, again, they're a reasonable price. They're not overpriced. They're not gouging you. They are a respectable, reasonable price at $10 for 100 darts. That's still better than anything Hasbro offers, and that really should say a lot for twice as many darts, more. So when I was pulling these to kind of see what the durability was, I did start to get some tearing of the foam around the dart head and a little bit of separation there. So it's not like they're indestructible darts, but they didn't just pop off like a lot of worker heads do. So definitely seems like reasonable dart construction quality and durability through use, but that'll have to wait until I can actually get these through a bunch of blasters for repeated use over time, et cetera, et cetera. That kind of like long-term stuff, I won't be able to answer today. As far as consistency when it comes to weight for these darts, it seemed to be about a 0.3 to 0.4 gram standard deviation kind of range. So anywhere from like, Nine, uh, 0 0.94 to 0 0.97 or 8 was kind of the range I was getting when I was weighing these. So not a massive difference, but it wasn't like every single one was, you know, smack on the same weight every single time, which I imagine is pr pretty, pretty hard or near impossible to do. So this seems like a relatively acceptable weight for these darts. How that will play out in performance for you, uh, that's something that you'll have to figure out depending on the blaster you're using and those kinds of details as with any dart. Now my one major massive complaint thing I hate about these darts is the color. Why go with a darker foam? Darker foam is just so much harder to track in the air. Like yeah, an orange tip, that's great. But if you've ever tried to track a dart to see if you tag someone or are refing a game and you need to see if a dart is hitting someone, darker foam is just harder to track in the air. It gets lost in so many more things to your eyes when you're trying to see them. If these were like a bright color foam, like the green that they went with for the pro darts, why not stick with that or go with something a little bit brighter like that? That's my main gripe with these and I really hope that they will offer another uh, foam color option in the future. I don't know if they will. They they may just be stuck in on this. I'm not sure, but I, fingers crossed. So let's jump into the other aspect that I wanted to talk about in this video and that's how these affect the hobby and the community and beyond the hobby as a whole. These are on store shelves. Anybody who's walking down a Nerf aisle is going to see these now in a Walmart. That's a big impact. And they see shoots over 125 feet on the box. That's gonna maybe make them start to think, oh, maybe there's another option. Maybe we'll have to look at this combined with uh, the blasters that Adventure Force is offering that are performing with these darts at much higher levels than a Nerf blaster. 
it may take some time, but it's very possible they will start to make a real impact on the toy aisle in Walmart. That brings me back to the X-Shot thing from earlier. Now, whether or not X-Shot ever does touch Half Darts or it's some other company, if another company does, and if there are more Half Dart options than full length options on a store shelf, what does that do to people walking in and seeing? If they see a majority is now leaning towards one direction, does that change the way they think in their mind? Is Nerf less likely to be their go-to choice when they have more options that are more affordable that seem to play nice with each other and perform better? At what point does that Nerf branding kind of drop off? Basically, how many more companies have to jump in on the half-length dart game to really make Hasbro step back and reevaluate and potentially answer back or get into half darts on their own. What is that tipping point? How much market share has to be lost for Hasbro to acknowledge that this is a thing? That it's not only a thing, it just performs better. Even at lower velocities, you're likely gonna see better performance out of a half length dart than a full length dart. Where is that line? And that's something I'm really, really curious about because I think it's super interesting to see what could happen if the kind of third party, smaller companies are able to influence and push the behemoth that is Hasbro into something that is more hobby friendly when they've tried to distance themselves so much from the hobby. And that to me is so much more interesting than just the fact that we have half darts on the shelf in its own right and that they perform and that they're a good solid option we can have. Like that's great. We've had half length darts for a while now so it's not necessarily new for us in the hobby. It's something just a little bit extra nice but the fact that these could bring more people into the hobby and make them aware of higher performing nerf blasters that is where the interesting layer in this is. And the fact that there may come a point where if enough companies get in and there's enough pressure there, Hasbro may have to respond. Now, it may never happen. Hasbro could just happily plot along with the Nerf brand being, you know, full length darts, mega darts, ultra darts, and, and all of that. And they are doing their own thing. And, you know, their brand name will probably carry them for who knows how long. But I like to think about the potential and the possibilities. And those are very interesting to me. Again, we'll have to wait and see, but that's just something that came to mind and I thought was it's worth having a little discussion about. So definitely let me know, am I kind of way off mark here? Am I kind of in the right realm, do you think? Do you think we'll see more companies jump in if they see Adventure Force doing well with these? Is that going to drive other smaller companies to try half-length darts? I don't know, I'm curious. I definitely always really love hearing your thoughts on topics like this, so let me know down below. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to have you part of the community. But I think that's gonna do it for me. I'll catch y'all next time. Uh. <laughs>